if you've got these things in your head that you really want to build, and you know, you can kind of, you got this, you know, small vision of a little piece of the future that like you want to exist, you should go and just try to make that thing. I'm Hartley Sawyer. I'm an actor, an activist, and a full-time work in progress. I am my business. I'm the CEO of me. Pursuing my goals has been a bigger challenge than I ever imagined. And taking risks, it doesn't always come easy for me. So I've come to New York to find how and where some of this city's most successful people find the courage, the strength to act, to roll the dice, make the leap, and make it happen. My education begins right now. This is Courageous Leaders. At 25, Dennis Crowley found himself evicted and laid off with no plans for his future. But it was his response to that that led him to build and sell his first company to Google. And when Google shuttered that company, he mustered the courage to build it again on his own terms. So Dennis, thank you for being here with me today at Foursquare. Uh, I want to ask you, is there any advice that you have for me if I want to start a business, if I want to start a new venture, and I'm kind of adverse to the idea of taking risks, because you're, you're taking a lot of risks here, and that's kind of how you've built your career. I see, I've never seen it as like taking risks. Um, I've always seen it as um, there's an opportunity to make this stuff, and there's these things, that, these ideas that we have in our head that no one else is making, and I can't find a job that's going to pay me to make those things because no one else is going to make them. So I guess we should just make them ourselves mm -hmm. and we should find a way to support ourselves as we do it. So I never had like that big risky moment of like, oh, I'm going to quit my job and start this thing from scratch. Um, but, you know, it's just stuff that's happened from tinkering all the time with all these different projects. I read an article in Time magazine 15 years ago, you had a really bad week. This was, this was going to be 2000, 2001 or so, and I had my really awesome dot-com job, mm -hmm. and uh, I got laid off, I turned 25, and uh, we got evicted from our apartment around the same time. All in the same and time frame? All in about a, a week or so. Basically, I went home and lived with my parents for like a couple weeks, and then was up in New Hampshire, and I worked as a snowboard instructor. I applied to grad schools, and I ended up finding myself at this place um, called the ITP program at NYU. And it was really at ITP that dodgeball turned from this hobby into a project, into a product, and then we eventually got hooked up for some people from Google, and that's how we ended up there. And then Google acquired the company. Yeah, Google acquired the company in uh, May of 2005. Was that at all a difficult decision for you to let go of that at that point? Um, no, not at all. That was like a best thing that's ever happened in my life type of thing. It was right. like, hey, someone thinks that the crazy stuff that we're working on is like so interesting and so valuable that they'll pay money to bring us into their company so we can continue working on it. So once Google acquires Dodgeball, they shuttered it basically, didn't they? Google was changing a lot at that time and like social was brand new and mobile was brand new and it just didn't fit into a lot of the things that were important to them at that moment. Um, and so we ended up leaving about two years after, which was tough because I was really still passionate about that space and like we weren't able to make it work at the scale that I really wanted it to. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted millions and millions of people using Dodgeball, we just never got there. Mm -hmm. And then I, I took some time off and then I started tinkering again, kind of the same way that I was tinkering before NYU and before Dodgeball. And then that's when you know, Naveen and I came up with the early prototypes for Foursquare. And Foursquare, again, it wasn't meant to be a company, it was just meant to be something that our friends used as a replacement for dodgeball because dodgeball got shut down eventually. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out that like, hey, we built something that people like to use so much that it wasn't just our friends, it was like their friends and then their friends and then, you know, people all over the US and eventually people all over the world. And, you know, six years later, we kind of have all this. People ask all the time, like, what's your best advice for entrepreneurs? And I really think the best piece of advice is, um, you know, if you've got these things in your head that you really want to build, and you know, you can kind of, you got this, you know, small vision of a little piece of the future that like you want to exist, you should go and just try to make that thing. And if you don't know how to code, like find a friend that does, or learn it out of a book, or just like hack a couple friends together and make something. Mm -hmm. You know, I think for the first, you know, couple years in my career. I would talk to people about these things I wanted to build, and they'd say, oh, that's a dumb idea, that's never gonna work, no one's gonna use it, it's Nathan, Google, Google yeah. will just do it instead. 
And if we listened to those people, we would have never built any of this. Mm -hmm. And so we just went and built it on our own. And sometimes the stuff worked and it was great. And sometimes it was lousy and we just decided to change it and build it again. But I think we, we taught ourselves what will be good, what will be interesting. We showed ourselves that the things that we could build could be used by millions of people. So that constant experimentation informs what you're doing. Uh, yeah, always. It's just tinkering and playing with different pieces of technology or different you know, user interfaces or different ideas and trying to you know, assemble them and disassemble them and then reassemble them in a way that allows us to build things that, that people love using. And you know that failure is going to be part of it, but you just keep moving forward every day. Yeah, I mean, we, we fail at stuff all the time here. You know? um, there's been a hundred different things that we've tried here that haven't worked. And you know, it's like you just recognize that something isn't working as well as you want it to, and you just go and change it, and you launch something else. Cool. And you just kind of constantly iterate your way uh, to making things that you feel proud of, and more importantly, things that people around the world love, and stuff that we love to use and we love to build. Mm -hmm. so. Dennis didn't have a plan when his life took an unexpected turn, but he did have an idea. If you stand by your vision, have the courage to ignore the naysayers, and keep tinkering, you might create something that people love. Serves its most amazing rewards for the bold, for the curious, for those with the confidence to pursue their dreams. Hiscox Business Insurance, the courage to do more and be more. Hiscox, encourage courage.